Well, uh, my name is Jacob Briggs. I come from Aarhus University's department in Herning, which is a, it's a small branch where we are very much practitioner-oriented. And, uh, well, this is my uh, key interest anyway. It is uh, applied research. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is what I do. I work with uh, innovation, but it's not innovation in a sense of making small adjustments. Uh, it's more innovation in the sense of making breakthroughs, uh, for example, uh, creating performance uh, improvements of 50% uh, and above. So it is very much about approaching what we do today in a completely different way. And what are the benefits of doing that, if any? Mm -hmm. So that's what I work with. From your research, what would you believe are the reasons for change in what we do today, the way we do it? In performance management. Well, in performance management and the research I've been doing for the purpose of this conference, uh, together with uh, Lois S. Peters from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in uh, Troy, New York, has been to put on, a, you can say, a new set of glasses. Uh, because if you go for breakthrough results, you don't know what the measure is, because you don't know what you're going for. So, therefore, it's difficult to state if it's, you know, are you on the right track? Is it going well? Uh, so it's an approach where we actually try to avoid having management, you know, having the decision making, because we don't know what we're making a decision about. So we try to work with identifying the benefits of having this radical approach uh, to innovation. And uh, the findings we have are quite unique because we don't look at uh, the results of finalized projects, but we look at all the small thing that happens that actually have a positive effect on the organization that occurs during the process of creating uh, new breakthroughs. So, uh, and actually the, the main conclusion, which it might seem a little banal, but the, the main conclusion of the, our paper for, for this conference is that it doesn't make sense to work with incremental innovation. Because if you go in a disciplined manner, that is use a, a systematic approach uh, for breakthrough innovation, all the incremental innovations are identified anyway. So going for one big project actually identifies a range of new uh, low potential, well, no, sorry, not, not low potential, but incremental approaches to improving performance anyway. So, and, and, and this is a, a sort of a unique finding because that gives a sort of a mandate or it gives ammunition to decision makers who want to really try to rethink their business because it doesn't make a difference if it's a success or not. Of course, everyone wants the success. We also know that 70% of the projects, they fail. So, but they actually don't fail, so fail is a wrong word. Because if you try to look at, as I say, put on new classes, what is, how, would, how does a project like that change the organization? And this is what we do instead of looking at how the organization affects the project. Uh, so it's a, a kind of a new perspective and a new way of, I wouldn't say measuring, but we also like the word monitoring. Yeah. So you can see how is the innovation stream boost in the organization, starting with one project that actually led or leads to 14 different projects or 31 different projects. Uh, so so it, it, it is a source of a knowledge repository because it gives you multiple new directions mm -hmm. for improved uh, performance. Viewing from research maybe to, to the organizational setting, which do you believe are the main challenges organizations face today in implementing or in using performance management systems? Well, I can only relate to my, you know, my area, which is uh, innovation management, and I mean the dif difficulties especially in relation to uh, the radical approaches to innovation, is that we don't know what to measure. You can only look at what you ask the people to do. So the key part is actually saying we need systematic approaches so we can become better at you know, going for something radical and accepting that we don't know what to say yes to. We don't know if it's good or it's bad, but we need to explore opportunities. Companies are measured on their exploitation, not their exploration. And, and I don't believe that it, it would be appropriate to measure, you know, using from one paradigm, the measures of saying, well, now we have a new patent or we have a new product. That is good. But if, I mean, if you have a radical innovation project that could be for five to six years, well, the patents, I mean, they could emerge alongside, but the introduction of a new product, well, it would be one thing occurring rarely.
And this is also, well, from the practitioner's point of view, I know that many companies have tried to make innovation hubs where they say, okay, we want to have a sort of a company within the company that are the, you know, innovators. So they are not biased by, you know, the ordinary way of thinking. The thing that happens is they are measured often from the other paradigm. So in practice, the companies that have started up using these hubs, they shut them down after three to five years because they cannot demonstrate the breakthroughs they are supposed to do. The big thing here is that they are not measured on the small improvements they actually also identify and create. So, so they actually are, they are a big source of incremental innovation, but they don't measure that. So, so and, and that's the interesting part that we should actually go a step back and see, okay, what is it actually the goal uh, that, that this radical uh, activity is? I mean, what's the purpose of it and what's the goal? Well, the goal would all, you know, it's growth often. In the private sector, or if it is the public sector, where I'm also uh, very active, it is more that we want to deliver a better service, or at least just the same service, with fewer resources. So we can use, you know, human resources in a way that is more appropriate instead of, yeah, uh, misusing them. Based on, on maybe on your research and uh, your findings, um, what would be three pieces of advice you would give to uh, companies on how to implement and use uh, performance, their performance management systems? Well, before implementing performance management, I know that you would like me to say that uh, they should start doing that. Uh, the key part, I believe, is that they first need to learn how to operationalize a radical approach to continuous innovation because it is not doing what we do today and just espouse that radical things will occur. So first they need to have some sort of a systematic approach and often, and perhaps this will make you happy or at least some of the viewers happy that if, if you're not used to having this sort of work task in your company or this process, you actually need someone, an external consultancy or someone who is experienced in having these, you know, other ways of approaching innovation inside the company to teach people how to do so. And then we could always try to start to measure, okay, after half a year, how many new concepts have we been developing? Not measuring if they're good or bad, but trying to identify, okay, if we have a new portfolio based on this project, what is the quality? What is uh, the potential and the viability of this portfolio? And if you do that, and this is also what I demonstrate, that if you look at it from this perspective, you can actually identify, well, the case I present today has 11 projects with action plans that can be implemented within six months, but altogether they will actually create a radical breakthrough in the company because they will save 30% uh, on production time. So, so it, and that's a good finding. But if you, don't, if you didn't look for these incremental uh, projects, you would miss them out, or you would just say that, well, nothing happened anyway, it wasn't a success, no, let's not do that again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are there any companies, to your knowledge, or maybe which companies would you recommend to look at um, due to their particular approach to performance management and their results, subsequent results? I am very much interested in small and medium-sized enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. I'm also very interested in uh, public organizations but they are two different entities. Mm -hmm. But they can actually be managed, the, the, the breakthrough approach can be the similar in both organizations, but you know, some public institutions, they are also influenced by policy. <clears throat> and that is uh, another external factor you cannot always, uh, well, you need to take it into account, but it is you know, in flux. For example, in Denmark, every fourth year, there's an election. So if it's a new you know, party color uh, in the government or in the municipalities, well, changes can occur. One. Yeah. Good. Uh, SMEs, because there are many of them, and they claim that they don't have the financial resources to go for a breakthrough innovation. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them don't, but I will also say that it is an assumption, because I've been looking into uh, the annual reports of 100 different just random SMEs, uh, the, though in Denmark, and, and a lot of them actually have a very good equity. Mm -hmm. The thing is that that equity is often the owned by the owner who is also the manager and then it becomes his private fund and you don't want to explore with these you just want to have this very nice and cozy um, so but if I can try to convince the SMEs to engage in collaboration with experienced people 
in doing the radical approach uh, to innovation, then they will have an increased performance. And it will be, well, the cases I have until now all demonstrate that it will influence the production process, it will become better. I cannot say how much because I don't have the quantity of cases, but the, the, uh, the, the interviews and, and, and the observations I've made, it's clear that they start to produce and manufacture faster or better. I mean, that's also a variable. Another thing is that they get this portfolio of potential new products, which are actually, some of them, quite easy to do. So other perspective could be that they take the existing product and put it into a new market with a small variation. A complete new business. So, I mean, looking at the business model, I mean, just make, making innovation there, it isn't easy, but it's not impossible if you do it disciplined. So you need the systematic again, and you need someone who knows to drive that systematic. Um, what do you believe are the key trends in performance management for 2014? Well, that question, I would say it would be speculation if I answer, uh, because my key area is not performance management. I just started to move into it because I can see that how it actually inhibits uh, innovation sometimes, because I mean, there's always some sort of you know, selection. And that selection, it's, if it's something that is with high uncertainty, it's easier to say no, so it stops. Uh, so, well, I would wish that people at least think about what is it we measure and how before they make a decision. Uh, so that would be my comment because everything else would just be, yeah, it wouldn't be based on anything I can substantiate anyway. So, and um, viewing from maybe the organizational and academic uh, sphere for a bit and going into personal life and lifestyle, um, please tell me, what is your opinion about this uh, emerging trend in using performance measurements in your day-to-day -day lifestyle, you know, like calorie trackers, pedometers? I see it as, for those who do, uh, I see it as a sort of incentive slash motivation approach, but it's very much uh, a behavioristic thing. So you can see now, okay, I've been you know, walking this and these amount of steps today, more than yesterday, hooray, I'm happy now. Uh, so, so I see, I mean, um, also in the social media, everyone, all, I mean, yeah, everyone who goes for a run always needs to, you know, say, now I went for a run and here's the route. They don't say if it was a good run or if, it, if they saw something beautiful or, I mean, if they had any nice thoughts, it just said, I went for a run. So, I mean, yes, but is it interesting data for me as a friend or, you know, the, the friend type you have of friends on Facebook uh, or, or no? It isn't, uh, but some people just have this sort of, uh, you can say, stubbornness. They just want to say that, well, my motivation is that if I can publish today that I ran X kilometers or X miles, then people will say, okay, you're a healthy young man or a healthy young uh, woman. But it's exploding and, well, I can't say why, but it gives a lot of data for companies, at least, if they can access it. Uh, so what do you think would be the benefit, maybe, to the companies of, of receiving this data, speaking of what we measure? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, if, if, it can, if, if you can use it in a meaningful manner, so you can see how the data could influence the way you have your business. Of course, to improve it, but also to find out are there some things that we are out of, you know, doing in an inappropriate manner. Uh, for example, where we put our marketing efforts. Uh, you can also see what people write. I mean, if you have a strong brand, you can see if there is misfit between what you think your brand is and what the, well, not only the customers, but also the potential customers and the users are the one who just like your brand or dislike your brand. You can see, you, you, you can use that actively uh, as a sort of, you know, promoting the company or at least being aware of the environment uh, as a scanning tool. But it needs to be done in a manner that you can access the profiles, of course, and the data. And I guess that it is a, there are ways to do that. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, welcome. Thank you.